Unit 3, Buying and Selling Live Animals, narrated by Julie Larson. So the first thing you want to do is you have to think about where you're going to purchase the animals for your farm. So a few ways to start looking and things that you start need to start thinking about is are you going to look locally? Uh, is there a farmer maybe near you who is a breeder? Or can you look in the newspaper or ask around? Maybe you drive past someplace that uh, has sheep or goats or chickens and you can stop in and ask. Or do you want to go to the internet? And uh, certainly you can Google whatever type of animal you would like and you will find many hatcheries and breeders. Uh, you also want to think about do you want to buy directly from the farmer or do you want to go to a, a livestock um, auction or you could also another area is a sale barn which is a type of auction but not quite as specific as a uh, livestock breeders auction. The last thing you want to think about uh, main thing that you want to think about is the maturity or age of the animal that you want to purchase. Do you want a young animal just weaned or um, a poultry, uh, in the case of poultry, you a day old chick or chicks? Or do you want to purchase a mature animal that uh, has been bred or is about to uh, or is at the breeding age or laying hens that are just about ready to start laying? You can buy those also. So you have to consider many things. Uh, you don't want to just buy the first animal that comes along. A lot of research will pay off in the end. So do you want to find your animal locally or on the internet? So you have to kind of think of a uh, So you have to decide whether you want to go to the farmer directly or buy your livestock at an auction or uh, a type of auction, which is a sale barn. Uh, direct dealer, you, uh, it's great because you can uh, see the animals, see the farm, uh, see where they were kept, how they were housed, uh, and you also begin to develop some relationships with those uh, dealers uh, or farmers uh, gives you a lot of insight into the quality of the animals. Uh, the second thing, the auction house. Uh, many of these are a high-end uh, auction house for breeding stock. Uh, usually they handle one breed, so you have the uh, Hampshire uh, sheep breeding auction, breeding stock auction. Uh, and, you know, if you, if, if you are looking for a high-quality breeding stock, this is definitely one way. Uh, they'll have a lot of information and pedigree on that uh, animal. The third way is the sale barn, and there's local sale barns in, in uh, almost every county has their has their own sale barn, and uh, you you do tend to be a buyer will beware. Uh, you have to really know what you're doing when you buy animals here. Not that you can't find some good ones, but if you're looking at breeding stock. Uh, you have to be very knowledgeable and really understand what you're looking at because sometimes uh, the, the animals are there because the farmers are just trying to get rid of them. They're a problem. So uh, if you do buy any animals from the sale barn, be sure to quarantine them uh, away from the rest of your animals, someplace that you can watch them for several weeks make, and make sure that their health is uh, just fine before you add them to your other animals. Another one of the important considerations when thinking about where or what to purchase uh, in livestock, you want to think about do you want to purchase a, a young animal or an animal that is mature, uh, ready to breed, or has been bred already? In the case of poultry, do you want to buy the day old chick or do you want to buy one that's ready to lay the eggs at about four to five months old? So, first off, let's look at the a younger animal. 
So there's going to be less cost for the animal up front. So generally the um, dale chicks, very inexpensive. Uh, an animal that's just been weaned um, can also very, be very uh, inexpensive to purchase. But you're going to have to feed them until, feed them, house them, uh, take care of them until they're ready for market or for breeding. And the other thing is there's the longer time that it takes to get to that part, uh, you have a bigger risk factor. Um, possibly is there going to be a big snowstorm and you're going to lose a few of those young ones or those day olds during that time. As opposed to if you have the mature animal that many times for uh, sheep and goats, you can you can buy them. They've already been bred. So you don't need to have a male animal on your farm, which can be uh, get expensive because you have to feed and house them also. Um, and uh, you have less time to get to market. You don't have to take care of them during those young, young months. Uh, so they're all set to go. Uh, and what you see is what you get. So if you're buying uh, a, uh, something for uh, that you're going to have bread, uh, you, you can see what they look like. You can see their conformation. You can see uh, possibly uh, what, what, their, uh, what their size is. Um, so those are all considerations. And in the world of egg laying, you pay a lot more for the mature hen, but if she's ready to start laying eggs in a few weeks, um, then you're, you're already ahead of the game. So it also depends. You have to think about what time of year it is, uh, breeding cycles, all of those things go into consideration. So now you're ready to sell your live animals. So here you have some decisions to make different ways you can go just as in purchasing your animals. These are some things that you have to think about. So do you want to sell them when they're uh, young or when they're mature? If you have uh, you had a great uh, birthing time and you have extra animals and you don't want to feed them to maturity, then take them in when they're just weaned. Or if you want to wait until they're older, uh, you have a lot of feedstocks, you want to just, uh, um, it's great to hang on to them and get a better price as they get older. Um, if you have registered breeding stock, you certainly want to uh, probably register the, the um, offspring, especially the ones you think are good quality. Maybe the ones that are it's the runt or one that uh, is, is kind of having a tough go, perhaps that one you want to take to the sale barn and keep the, uh, and register some of the other ones for sale. Uh, and then you want to think about uh, which ones you want to take to sale barn. And we'll go through the whole process of uh, uh, what that means. And also for a mature we want to look at how old uh, mature sizes and ages for different animals. Determining market readiness is a few things to take into account. So you want to look at, of course, the live weight, because then you should be able to determine from your dressing percentage averages. You should be able to determine what your carcass weight will be. So you want to make sure you get that live weight up to where you think it will be best. Confirmation, filled out but not fat. Remember, fat is one of those things you do not want on the carcass. Uh, and then also commodities, the grading systems to categorize your product. Uh, all goes back to all these things we've talked about. Looking at the carcasses and the fat content and uh, the grading systems uh, for the uh, different animals. So before you bring your animals to the sale barn, a few things that need to be thought of uh, and done so that you have the best information for when you actually have your animals there. First thing is to visit several different auction houses if you can. 
different auctions, sale barns, whether it's a high-end uh, breed auction or your local sale barn, uh, can give you a lot of good ideas on what the going prices are, how the auctions run. They're very, very quick. People speak very fast. Uh, you really want to get on to kind of how that lingo works. Ask questions of the people. If there's something you're not sure of, ask the person next to you. Um, maybe not while he's bidding, but certainly, um, you know, when there's a little break or you can see that that person's not interested. Uh, the regulars can really tell you a whole lot about how the auction runs. So take the time to do a little bit of research, take a little time to really get a feel for them, and uh, you, you'll have a much better understanding when you take your animals in. Um, next thing is you really want to get those charges straight, understand what you're being charged for, if there's any extra fees. Uh, sometimes they charge you for uh, bedding, different things that they um, can latch on. Payment, uh, when will you be paid, how will you be paid. Uh, most places you can just pick up a check at the very end. Uh, sold and how they are sold. Are they sold by weight? So maybe there's five animals of your animals that go in together. Is it going to be the weight of all five animals? Or are they going to do a per animal sale? So maybe it's $50 per animal and you have to keep that straight in your head. Uh, but it's good to know that up front, some auction houses will do both. So you want to just understand that up front, how they run their sales so that you have the best information when you take your animals in. Okay, so you have decided on what sale barn you want to take your animals to. You're all set to go. You know what time you need to be there. You're all set to go. So first thing you get there, I would highly recommend you stop at the office first. Just make sure that you're following all the instructions they want the way they want them done. Uh, some of them will want you to have the paperwork filled out first, or uh, many of them you just fill out the paperwork when you unload. But find that out first, because there are probably going to be people that are waiting in line, or uh, they just need to get moving. They want to move things along as quickly as possible. Then you're going to bring your animals to the designated unloading site. Uh, don't just assume you know which door they want you at. Uh, be sure you understand all of that that day. So unload your animals and make sure you follow their instructions how you want it to be done. When the animals come through, they'll be tagged. They'll take your paperwork. And then when the animals are unloaded, you are free to go in and have a seat, and you can watch the entire auction take place. Uh, it may take a while, uh, if depending on how many people are there that day. And then you're all set. So which of all these different options is the best for your farm? Well, you may find that there'll be one thing that you do that really uh, is very lucrative, uh, you enjoy doing, and that you just want to stick with that one particular way of operations. So maybe you have your breeding stock of, of sheep and goats, and you kid and lamb at a certain particular time, you're finished with that and at a particular age you take them in whether you sell them to someone who wants the feeder lambs or you raise them up to uh, um, market weight and you decide to take them uh, to a dealer and then you sell all of them at one time you're finished that's great and uh, it's that's a great way to do it but most people will find that they use a variety of these different buying and selling techniques for their farms you just never can really depend on one thing uh, going all the time so maybe you sell some of the feeder lambs and you hold back some of the better ones that you think can really get to wait uh, the best time and uh, bring you the most money uh, you really do need to look at it as an operation and uh, in the, for poultry, uh, maybe it's best to, whether you want to do broilers or if you think you really enjoy doing egg layers, uh, two totally separate operations. Um, but you can 
possibly if you really like poultry and you're set up, do some broilers while you have your layers also going at the same time. So it's really what works out for best for you. And uh, as we proceed and we get going with our farm plan, uh, hopefully some of these ideas will take shape.